Thank you, Young. Al and I are grateful for the opportunity to share with you today the key milestones of the journey of teaching agricultural science at the University of Tasmania, and perhaps outline some of the directions on our horizon and the challenges which may accompany those pathways. We've heard this morning the core idea of the bioeconomy, and a shift in this direction is expected to enhance international competitiveness of domestic industries, create new jobs, and contribute to a revitalisation of rural communities. We feel that training of skilled agricultural professionals is, a, is crucial to meet this demand. So over the next couple of minutes, together Al and I will take you on the journey that is agricultural science teaching at UTAS, looking briefly at how things started, where we have come to be where we are now, and looking forward to what our courses might look like to train the graduates of the future. The first students were enrolled in what was then the Faculty of Agricultural Science at UTAS in 1963. The original agricultural science course was firmly based around the physical and biological sciences relevant to agriculture. The Bachelor of Applied Science, as it's known now, was introduced in 1995 as a result of the McColl and Lazenby reviews. Subsequently, we've seen further development and introduction of the Bachelor of Science with the major in microbiology and Master of Applied Science with a major in agriculture or microbiology. In each iteration, the focus has remained firmly on the science, but diversity has been built in. Historically, our target audience was Tasmanian grade 12 leavers. The goal has been to prepare graduates for a range of agricultural careers, and our graduates have found themselves filling diverse roles and been in demand by local industry. The education and training provided by UTAS has equipped graduates to have significant impact and in fact drive industry growth. We can be very proud of those whose contributions have led to the development of strong, viable Tasmanian industries. Pasture species, uh, essential oils crops, extractive crops, animal breeding, floriculture, just to name but a few. So as we reflect on the, the history of what we've been teaching within the School of Agricultural Science, which has obviously merged now be the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture, we've got these strong core science-based disciplines. And when we reflect on the last three years in particular, we've seen that we've picked up and we've started to deliver uh, some more um, teaching into different areas, I should say. Some of those have included uh, breadth units. These are units or subjects that are available to students enrolled in any course at the University of Tasmania. But it's, called, it's, it's important to say, though, that we've had an important role uh, in those. There's also been what we've called now the, the associate degrees, and we have a diploma uh, in horticulture business as part of that. And that's a new, new initiative, a new way of actually uh, teaching and reaching new communities, particularly in the rural regions and as well as a Bachelor of Science with a major in food safety, which is a two plus two program we have with the Chinese university. And we'll have our first cohort arriving here on our shore in this coming semester, which is only a few weeks away. But to give you a brief map on our history, I'm not gonna go right back in time to the 1960s, but I'm gonna, gonna start at 2013 and look at the commencing students into our courses. This, what you can see on the chart at the moment, is into our Bachelor of Agricultural Science, our four-year course, and in addition to that, into our Bachelor of Applied Science, Agriculture and Business, which is our three-year course. And you can see in 2014, there was a significant drop-off in numbers there, and I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. These are the numbers that are enrolled in our major in microbiology in the Bachelor of Science. I should add here, it's, it looks like a very small number. We have actually a lot of students doing our second year microbiology subject. We have over, generally over 100. And then we have growth, and this is in our, match, our Master of Applied Science. We have two streams, one stream is agriculture, the other stream is microbiology. This is largely overseas students enrolling in this particular course. So that has been our changing numbers, and I should add that these are commencing numbers. 
So it doesn't represent the total number of students that we are connecting with at any point in time. It just represents the new cohorts that are we can connecting with in our particular programs or offerings. Then moving into the green here, which is what some of the courses we're beginning, we've, we've started to uh, deliver since the challenge which represented to us in 2014 of the low numbers. How do we do things different? How do we connect beyond the year 12 lever in the local region to connecting nationally and also internationally in a stronger way? And I've put up in here, this is the associate degree in agribusiness. Uh, these are particular numbers, so we're instrumental in partnering with University College in offering that particular course. Then we have the, um, mas this is the master class in horticultural business, which is, provides uh, an accreditation as a diploma in horticultural business. And we've also got then the Bachelor of Science uh, food safety stream that I've already mentioned. And you can see the significant growth that we have experienced. Well, it does go quickly, Joe. Well, we'll come back, sorry about that. So what does all that mean when we start to put this together? It means that we've spent probably, I'd say, four or five decades delivering largely to domestic year 12 leavers to a situation now where the, the, the community that we're engaging with also represents mutual people within industry who know what they're doing and where they're going um, and already invested in the area and also the growth in that international space as well. Made me nervous, Joe. <laughs> so we have been working really hard at getting our message, our student outreach message correct. We've moved from a place of uh, agriculture is not just driving tractors and muddy boots to a message that agriculture can be driving tractors and wearing muddy boots, but also so much more involving food innovation, food safety, bees with sensor backpacks, flying drones, and everything else that excites excitement in our young people facing career decision making. We're also working very hard with our potential students' key influencers. So their parents, teachers, and careers advisors. So we've been developing uh, resources for Tasmania's Department of Education to instill the themes of agriculture in STEM teaching in schools. So if you like, getting them to do some of our marketing for us. We've also been delivering teaching professional learning activities and engaging and building relationships with the people that are in front of these students every day. And to strengthen our message, we're using compelling narratives, something that Holger touched on this morning. So we're using the narratives of our ag students and also our graduates to share their exciting career pathways. Industry voice has also been magnified, sharing uh, stories of demand for jobs, rewarding careers, facing some of the world's wicked problems, and improving the agriculture image problem that we sometimes see in the media. Two recent examples that have been shared in the last fortnight in social media. On your left, the great work from our TR comms team, sharing the success of our TR students at the recent National Merino Challenge, where our students took out individual and teams uh, prizes, winning prizes, on a national stage. And then on your right, an example of voluntary positive feedback and encouragement of two of our Ag Science graduates. Together, they are entrepreneurs, both exhibiting at the Dark Mofo festivities in Hobart last week, and encouraging agricultural education as an exciting career pathway. And as you can see, the outreach of social media um, stories such as these is really exciting for the story that we've got to share. The team is really busy engaging with communities, teachers, students of all ages through school visits, careers fairs, camps, teachers' professional learning activities, AgFest Science Week, and the list goes on. Touching on one of the themes from this morning, it is important to say we have acknowledged the need to excite young children about careers in agriculture. And although the journey is long until we see them in our lecture theatres, it is something we are passionate about and instill in our student outreach strategies. 
We are believers in pester power. So when a child goes home to tell his parent or his teacher about the value of STEM and agriculture specifically, it's powerful. So where to now? We're committed to building on our strengths and we believe our strengths can be encapsulated in the breadth of our disciplines, in maintaining our engagement and alignment with industry, curriculum designed to teach local, national and global themes of agriculture, and maintain our strength as a research-led teaching institute. With many changes afoot, the future is bright for both our students and the learning and teaching team within TIA. There are challenges for us, and I believe they are around being creative, flexible, embracing diversity whilst retaining depth and rigour, and to be brave in our approach to teaching. There's been much talk today about internal collaboration, and it's certainly something we have paid much attention to. A turning point at UTAS, which Al's touched on already, is the introduction of breadth units. And this has enabled us to take agricultural concepts to students from all academic units across the university. It's encouraged our teaching staff to collaborate with teaching experts in business, health, spatial sciences, philosophy, and together we strive to shape the context in which a student's thinking develops to reflect changing societal challenges and economic opportunity. We're seeing large cohorts of students engaging with agriculture, just some listed on the slide here. Fermented food and drink production, this year over 140 students. Global food security, 100 plus students. And working with communities, 70 plus students. So in addition to increasing our internal reach, we've also increased our external reach. And one of the examples already been touched on earlier, particularly by Holger during one of the, the chaired sessions here, was a new course, a, a masterclass in horticulture business. I want to reflect on our learnings from this because it's a significant course and I think it provides uh, potential for us to reach um, to rural and regional areas of Tasmania and Australia in particular. Uh, this particular course is a short course. It was developed in the initiative to meet specific needs and those needs sat within the horticulture industry. And so in partnership with Hort Innovation and other universities, we developed a program that, that met that gap that existed. So this was a demand driven course that we put together because we are seen as in Tasmania here, which is great as leaders in the horticulture sector. Uh, so it's been tailored and it's through uh, online delivery because we want to be able to deliver this course across the nation. So this course, so in, in, in uh, just some of the background to it, is as I said, it's been shaped by industry. So we have a steering committee that oversees this course. Uh, and on that steering committee are people who are significant producers, but also typically exporters of produce as well, and are seen as our national leaders in that space. And there's also been three universities involved. Uh, so we have Wageningen University out of the Netherlands, uh, Lincoln University uh, from New Zealand and, and ourselves. Uh, so we are the lead university and we actually have all the IP to this particular course. And it's important to say that it's also funded by Hort Innovation, uh, the RDC for horticulture. And it's great to see that they're moving from not just funding research and development projects, but funding programs that support the development of people within that particular sector. I get nervous with this now. <laughs> so it's fair to say that because of the partners involved in this particular program, that it actually has international standing. Uh, and that's an important thing that obviously we're trying to capitalise on. It is a diploma, it is a one year offering, so it's 40 weeks in duration. Uh, it is online and there are three face-to-face -face intensives at the start, in the middle and at the very end. Uh, it, the first year was offered last year, uh, was out, sorry, our first year of offering was last year and it was capped at 30 and, uh, and in this year we've again had a similar sort of number. But we know that the demand is greater than that particular number. Sorry about that, this, yep, we're there. So who are the sorts of people that have enrolled in this particular program? 
So last year, the number of people we enrolled, I said, was, was 30, uh, and the ages range from the 20s through to the 50s. Uh, they're involved in businesses that range in size, uh, from one to 15 staff, that was about 50% of the cohort, and through to almost 250 staff. So there's a range of business sizes involved, uh, a range in educational backgrounds and attainment prior to engaging with the course as well, and were geographically spread. So each state of Australia was actually represented in this, in this course. So important outcomes is, is that of leadership development and skills development of the people, understanding the business that they are working in, not just going through the production of it, um, and also opportunity for networking and support. I wanted to get to this key slide, and that is what are some of the impacts that have been associated with this program? So at the end of last year, we actually had each of the participants, as I called them, um, had to present a business plan, and the first guy here I want to present is, is Daniel. Daniel from Bulma Farms in Victoria. He presented a business plan um, of, actually of actually buying his own property. So he was an employee within Bulma Farms. He wanted to buy his own property. He put together his business plan, took it to a bank and got a loan and has done so. But he's still partnering with Bulma Farms, which is a large um, operation in Gippsland region that produces uh, products for salads. I want to present Hugh uh, of Dickey Bill. Hugh's partner has a business partner called Ryan. They're both in their mid-30s. They have grown their business from nothing to, to a situation where it employs roughly about 150 people. Uh, he has a base, a production base for, for fresh um, salads and things like that products in Victoria and also in Queenslander. And this year he was named Exporter of the Year for the horticulture industry. Uh, Sonia from the nursery industry. Sonia is someone that was passionate about eventually engaging with tertiary institutions. Uh, her children are now young adults and she saw the opportunity through this particular course to actually um, increase her, her, her knowledge base of her business. So her and her husband have a nurse, nursery business and she's also highly recognised within the nursery industry and a leader already. But as part of doing this particular course, she wants to continue her studies and has the ambition of eventually doing a PhD. And I hope that's also with the University of Tasmania. And lastly, I want to um, present Lachlan to you. Lachlan was someone that was is based in Townsville. And he got up at, in his in final presentation, we were presenting his business plan at the end of last year. And he got up and said, when I started this course, I considered myself a farmer. But now I consider myself a businessman, a supply chain coordinator, a risk assessor, a manager, a marketing guru, an innovator, and an entrepreneur, and I see myself as an industry leader. And I find those that quote uh, quite remarkable because of the sincerity with which he delivered it. So I think it's fair to say that, that through, um, through this course and the other courses that we are delivering, I think it's fair to say, and I'm proud to say from behalf of the university, that I think now we are, we are recognised nationally, not just locally, uh, that we have this ability to maintain our distinctiveness and build on the strengths that we have, both through our research and development portfolio and our, te our teaching portfolios, that we've demonstrated that we can be responsive to needs, such as the example I've used with the, the masterclass, and we have that desire to partner both internally and externally to increase our reach and impact. And so just in summary, I think it is that internal and external partnerships and our responsiveness that I hope will continue to shape the courses that we deliver that has a real impact in the future. Thanks very much. business of the university is not just the creation of knowledge. knowledge, it's passing that knowledge along in a powerful and exciting way so that people can go on and live their full lives. We have time for a question. Uh, thank you. My name is Marcus Griffin. I'm uh, uh, from North SA Agriculture Farming out just outside Lawn System, but also on the TIA Advisory Board. Um, I think what you're doing and what you've talked about, it's an, it's an area that I'm incredibly passionate about, getting young people and get, well, young and middle-aged and even aged people into agriculture, it doesn't matter where you come from. I guess as we're talking about the bioeconomy today, one of my greatest concerns is we're actually going to end up with a two-speed economy. Because at the end of the day, we're pushing it, we're drawing a lot of people through and into the university side, which is fantastic. But I can't find anyone to work on our farms. 
because uh, you know, and recently we've just done an advertisement for two key positions, which had to have a lot of practical experience, and and they were done on Seek both uh, in Tasmania and Australia wide, and in various publications here, and we got one applicant for two positions, and that was to one was to look after cropping overseer to have, a, you know, an element of agronomy background, but also to be able to operate machinery, and have a mechanical background, and the other was to be in livestock handling. And we found plenty of people that came with many as many tickets as they wanted, as we wanted to see, but none of them had any practical experience. And so that's where I'm concerned about what we're going to be doing. If we're going to really grow our bio economy, we have to make sure that we've, as well as having a huge amount of skilled people, we've also got a lot of doers. It's interesting that you actually raise that particular question about the competency base, not just um, an education base. Um, I was discussing with uh, Steve Ives, actually, I think Steve's here somewhere in the audience. So Steve's oversees the associate degree in agribusiness offering at the University College. And in that dialogue, the question I, I actually did raise to Steve was, how do we encourage and foster greater connection to organisations that deliver that competency base so that someone knows how to calibrate spray equipment. Someone already knows how to drive a tractor. I myself, I come off a farm, so I get that. I get the importance of those competency-based skills, but adding to that the ability to, to uh, think critically and, and understand the science of what we're doing as well. And I think that's a, a healthy challenge for us to take on board. How do we bring these two together, blend these two to have greater impact? So, I Claire, do we have time for one more question? One more, please, right there. Uh, hi, Sandy Murray here from the School of Health Science. Um, I'm the coordinator of the um, nutrition science degree and I see some huge synergies between what you're doing which is incredible and, and what we're doing in School of Health Sciences. Thank you Nuala, uh, who's my boss. And um, it's interesting because I'm now starting to explore healthy and sustainable food systems in the curriculum of what I'm teaching my students. Is there a similar interest for you in nutrition science or health for your undergraduate students or your postgraduate students? And is there an opportunity to talk moving forward? I would say yes, yes and yes. So already at the postgraduate level, those conversations are being had. So my colleague who I share an office with has a PhD student working on cherry export quality who has also got a very keen interest in anthocyanin health benefits. So those synergies are already um, existing and absolutely there's potential for astronomical growth at that level. But the interest is definitely there um, and very much at the undergraduate level as well. Something that has come out in the past couple of years is the very strong motivator of students um, leaving grade 12 to be able to head into the area of foreign aid. And it's something that 10 years ago, we weren't hearing back from our target audience about their desire to head into foreign aid. And deep, deeply sort of embedded in that are these issues of human health and nutrition. Um, and we're seeing, because of some of these fabulous programs that are being run about healthy lit for kids and the kitchen garden programs and, and school farms and, and linking to school canteens and you know we're, we're seeing a huge growth in that area. The conversation is happening about producing and growing those foods and then the potential to be able to, to start to delve that conversation off into health and, and research and science and, and agriculture. So Thanks excellent presentation, excellent questions. Please thank Alan Joe.